Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Okay, and uh, let's talk about the SKU a little, because people always talk about the SKU, and it's very confusing, but it's very simple, pretty much. It's the it's how much premiums are depend uh, are in each strike depending on the strike. So you can kind of see here the volatility skew has a is higher as the strike price goes down, and it gets lower as the strike price goes up. And the way you the reason that is is because most people are long stock, and they buy puts for protection, and they'll sell upside calls like in a buy right or some sort of uh, uh, income returning strategy. So basically, people are usually always selling the upside calls and buying the downside puts. Also, in most stocks, the downside movement is much faster than upside movement. So the the premium for the downside protection is always higher. Now, for uh, options like in the VIX or in commodities, this smile will be all the way around because the upside risk is higher. For example, if you're growing oranges and the orange crop failed, basically the upside risk of having no oranges is greater. That's a great point, Stefan. You know, I give these, this seminar so often and people forget that. The different markets have different volatility structures. That's a great point. Right, and the thing I... I really like about the FX options is FX options, basically the currency, the skew should be flat. So by the order flow, by how much the skew moves uh, up one way or another could possibly indicate which way the stock is going to move. But uh, it's just a, you know, I don't think it's like definitely proven, but you can kind of try to check that out. Right. Uh, Assuming that a country isn't going to go bankrupt, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, what else affects volatility? Well, basically, um, it's, the, it's the fear in the marketplace and demand. So what happens is as the stock market goes up, like it has been for the last six months, people generally tend to sell upside calls because they like doing buy rights because it's very profitable. And also people like selling puts because they wouldn't mind buying the stock if it fell below it. And if it didn't fall below that price, then they basically get to collect premium this whole time. Inversely, if the stock starts going down, what happens is people start buying puts because they, they're panicking and they want protection. And a lot of people, they'll, they'll start speculating on buying calls. So, you know, I know I did it when I started was if, if I see a stock down like 50%, I might go in and buy a call hoping like it would bounce up. So basically when the, when the stock market goes down, it seems like everyone is buying, from speculators to people who are trying to uh, buy protection. Also, uh, special event stocks such as uh, takeovers of biotech have the same issue. Okay, so let me actually go to the application. And let me see if I can actually, do you guys see it there? Yeah, I'm here. Steve, can you see? Uh, no. You, 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 what you got to do is hit share uh, application. Okay. At the top, go to share application. So basically why, I will kind of go over like why I actually developed the system with Ron. Uh, to give you a small, quick background, basically me and Ron started trading for a company, and then we went on our own in 2002. And when we did, we realized there wasn't really any good application that we can use to analyze stocks. And back then, most people only traded like 10 issues. But, uh, you know, now, now people trade, I think last year I was trading upwards of like 200 to 250 stocks at the same time. So to be able to analyze stocks quickly was very important. So um, this chart right here, 
If you can you see my uh, mouse going over this red line? Absolutely. Okay. So this red line right here is the IV30 chart that we talked about, and it's basically predicting what the stock movement is going to be for the next 30 days going forward. Now this blue line right here is telling it, the way it's calculated is using the past 30 days to basically tell you uh, what the average is. Now, as you can see, this red line kind of goes up and down in a predictable manner. Uh, let me increase it. And you'll see it right here. You see every time there is a peak, there was earnings. So, you know, I have people telling me like, hey, I just, you know, I did my first options trade. Usually like it's buying a call. And then I ask them like, did you make money? They say no. And usually it's because they bought like a call right before earnings, right? Because people think like Amazon is going to have good earnings. They're, they have intimate knowledge of the company because they use the product. They shop over there. And then they buy it at the very end. What they don't realize is that everyone is buying leading up to earnings. So the volatility gets extremely expensive. So if you were actually going to trade Amazon through earnings, what you should do is probably not buy at the end, but maybe buy it more at the beginning. And if you are actually uh, leaning one way or another, you should probably do some kind of spread where you can offset your volatility risk. So it's, this chart is really predictable. So like this next earning is coming up in Amazon. So you, everyone can basically see like, hey, the volatility goes up and down. And, uh, and basically you can see that if you, if you bought a straddle or a call spread going up, it's probably, uh, you know, it's probably not a good time to buy it up here, but it's better to buy it on the downside. Stefan, so you guys are offering this service for whatever, and you'll get to that, the financials later. How would an attendee uh, start using it as far as how would you learn, let's say that they decide to take you know, use the service, because this looks like a really neat tool. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of them, but this looks really cool. How do you learn all, about, all, all the different functionality that you have in your system here? Okay, uh, let me show it to you. So you see these earnings right here? Mm -hmm. It's basically telling you, it's basically telling you that the earnings are right at this point right here. See how the red line is peaking? And this is when most of the people actually buy options. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.